Supervisor here. I'm our system administrator. Basically, everything you see on the website is me and my team. So, I'm very excited <laughs> to be doing this because it's not a part of my normal job. <laughs> um, a little bit about us. For those of you who don't know, University Bookstore is 118 years old. It was opened in 1900, and we are Seattle's original independent bookstore. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Um, and thank you for supporting authors and independent booksellers um, in the promotion of free ideas and progress. Um, as you can see, we are moving some things around, <laughs> uh, so please pardon our dust as we work to make the bookshop better for you. Um, okay, we are here tonight to go ham on the patriarchy. <laughs> who is 100% that bitch to show us how, Erin Gibson. Erin is the co-host of the Hilarious and Smart podcast, Throwing Shade, which has been fighting the good fight for ladies and gays since 2011. She is an Emmy-nominated writer, actor, urban witch, weed queen, an all-around feminist badass. Like Erin, I too do not give a fuck about what the patriarchy thinks. <laughs> and this was an unpopular opinion growing up, and it continues to be today, thanks to existing within a system that abhors anything that isn't straight, white, and male. As a woman who has been described as too loud, too opinionated, too smart, a mess, and who has been, just, uh, and who has been asked many times to just let it go already, Finding Erin, listening to her podcast, watching her take on some of the worst men and women the Republican Party and the patriarchy deploys against us was like coming home. She inspires me to advocate for women, stand up for what I believe in, lead by example, and empower my community and myself. To get us in the right headspace for tonight's event, I wanted to share with you a few of my favorite moments from the book. I think best enjoyed out of context. <laughs> Translated into an equation, it looks like this. Four classes of men divided by years in school, plus the number of times you smiled, equals potential husbands. <laughs> While I'm prepared to spend however much it takes at a weed store to manage my shark week, women shouldn't be forced to rely on a dispensary for help navigating the menstrual pain. Do you think that I let a case of violent marinara and mozzarella verbs get in the way of showcasing my SIA dance skills to my husband and dog who just want to sleep? No, because when I'm wasted, I'm committed to my art. <laughs> and my personal favorite, when I see a jacuzzi, I think, there it is, the one that got away. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming so nasty Erin Gibson. Ah. <laughs> Yay! That was awesome. Thanks, Allison. Oh, man. That was great, Allison. Thanks so much for coming out, y'all. First day of school. Holla. Aren't you glad you're not in it anymore? Um, this is so exciting. Let me just get my computer to wake up. Um, oh, so many emails. Hey, I'm so excited you could come out and um, celebrate this with me. This is my first book and um, that anyone's seen. And, um, and I wrote it because I wanted to have, um, I wanted to have a book about feminism for 18 year old me. Uh, young girl who is only concerned with Marlboro lights and getting fingered and um, <laughs> and didn't really understand the all the ways that I was marginalized you know um, so this is this is a kind of a love letter to myself and I hope that it'll be a, um, a manual for people who feel similarly and for people who maybe don't maybe don't really understand feminism and we can trick them into caring about themselves and other people. So um, that's what I hope for this book. So I hope you all really enjoy it. Um, I, I love Seattle. This is one of my favorite cities. 
it's so hard to pick a restaurant because everyone has 40,000 Yelp reviews. Um, so thank you for making me uh, trust my gut on places. Um, so I wanted to, there's a lot in this book. I, I, I shit on a lot of men. And while a lot of them deserve it, there's rotten, succulent Donald Trump. Um, there's um, uh, garbage truck Mike Pence. I call John Glenn a cum basket. There's, uh, there's a lot of guys getting, getting um, what they deserve in this. But I want to talk about some women who can be misogynist and get in the way of us progressing in life. So I put together a slideshow of um, some backstabbing bitches. <laughs> Classic example from uh, that movie that everyone watched, uh, Blade Runner. Blade Runner, the movie. Um, okay, um, there are a lot of awful women, powerful women out there making life terrible for other women because they haven't gotten the memo that that's retrograde as fuck. They've, um, in their efforts to play a man's game, they've, uh, to get to a position of power, they've aligned themselves against women. And I don't think their minds can be changed, so we have to know who they are, be ready for their tactics, and have our curling iron set all the way to hot. Um, I want to look at some examples of um, some supreme globs of putrid waste of a vagina. Um, first one, Phyllis Schlafly. Oh, by the way, I've chosen awful fonts for all of them. <laughs> That's the one she deserves. <laughs> this is Phyllis Schlafly. <laughs> now, I know what you're saying. She looks fun. <laughs> She's jumping on a trampoline with pantyhose on, by the way, which is basically like a death wish. <laughs> uh, she's got china in her living room <laughs> and chairs that face out so that you can have a salon facing nobody. So she's really doing it all right. But listen. Don't be fooled by this carnival of a living room. Um, she's an awful, awful person. Now on paper, she's actually kind of like Rosie the Riveter fan fiction. She worked as a ballistic gunner and technician at an ammunition plant during World War II. She had a bunch of kids. Then she went to law school to become a lawyer when like 4% of lawyers were women. But in practice, she's what I call bizarro Gloria Steinem. <laughs> It's as if upon Gloria's birth, the universe sought balance by creating an opposite, a ruthless sort of woman who would become successful in her male-dominated career, fighting gender stereotypes and breaking glass ceilings, then securing her throne on Progress Mountain by kicking other women off and then feasting on their carcasses. <laughs> She was a constitutional lawyer, anti-feminist, and all-around hate-filled human who makes Nurse Ratchet look like Florence Nightingale. I think Nurse Ratchet is the hero. She, she had a fucking hard job, no one was helping her out, and then here comes this narcissist, and they're just looking for a free bed. And you know what? He got what he deserved, which is his brain removed. <laughs> so, um, Phyllis basically single-handedly blocked the ERA, the Equal Rights Amendment, which would have been a constitutional guarantee of equal rights for women in the United States. The ERA at this point was ratified by 35 states and was on track to get the 38 states it needed to, um, to be passed. And by the way, 37 states have ratified it now, and I met a lady, a lady attorney in New York who was working to get the 38, so let's cross our fingers that she's doing that. Yeah, that was... She was like, oh, hi, I'm a hero. Nice to meet you. <laughs> um, anyway, America was on the gender track to equality, and then Phyllis Schlafly came to town riding her hell horse called Stop ERA, which you can see she's made a... See, in the, in the, in the 70s, you couldn't just have something screen printed, so she had to print it on something and then pin it to her blouse with a Donna Reed pen. <laughs> oh, by the way, so she, so she blocked it. She got it blocked by saying that it was going to take away the dignity and uh, role of homemaker for women, a role she did not even fulfill. And when the ER, when it didn't pass, she threw a party for it, a burial party for it, 
and had a band play Ding Dong the Witch is Dead at a hotel in DC. Um, she had this to say about the ERA. The ERA is dead for now and forever in this century. A new era of harmony between women and men begins. Oh, my thing fucked up. This is supposed to be hidden, but whatever, I'll say the joke anyway. <laughs> the best thing about Phyllis Schlafly is she's dead. <laughs> Bye, wig. The formatting got fucked up, that, but that's okay, we all... The point is, she's dead. <laughs> Bye, wig. Okay, new font. Here we go. So, there's other, now she might be dead, but there's other ladies like her, women like Renee Elmers. And I hope everyone can survive this font because it's the worst. It's bleeding into nowhere. <laughs> and before we get into it, I just want to clear something up. No relation. <laughs> I know you all had that question. I did when I, when I read about her. So Renee became famous for like half a second when she was representative of North Carolina in 2014. At a Republican event, she begged her male colleagues to make their messaging to women clearer. Here's what she said. We need our male, oh, she's from North Carolina. We need our male colleagues to understand that if you can bring it down to a woman's level and what everything that she's balancing in her life, that's the way to go. What everything that she's balancing in her life. I don't, I guess what she's, okay, here's what she's saying. Well, first of all, can we just talk about this? I can't. What is that? That is a neckline for sea animals, not for suits. Um, God, scallops called, they want their neckline back. Um, okay, her point is, hey, male politicians, talk to women like we're dumb because we're busy. We can't balance the triplets on our hips, marinate the chicken, put our hair in a French braid, do the dog's pedicure, and concentrate on debt ceiling PowerPoint presentations filled with conservative biased data. We've got shrinky dinks in the oven. <laughs> shrinky dinks if you're um, <laughs> under 30 or a thing that you did in the 80s where you would put plastic in an oven and you'd pull it out and it was smaller. <laughs> And then you were like, you'd be quiet for an hour, basically. <laughs> Your mom would have a break. <laughs> um, Renee also objected to a provision in the Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act, which is my drag name, <laughs> <laughs> which is a shitty anti choice law based on a, what would Jesus do bracelets, basically. And in it, there was a provision that it would allow, uh, in it, it would allow a woman, even though it was anti-choice, it would allow a woman who was seeking an abortion after 20 weeks to have the procedure if she was a victim of rape or incest. And Renee Elmer says, no, lady, you will have a criminal's baby and you will like it. That's what kind of lady she is. She's also this kind of lady. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> This is her pretending to be a human table for Donald Trump, and this is the happiest she's ever been. Did y'all hear Donald Trump signed something on my back? Yeah, that's, that's, her, that's her intro to every party for the next 25 years. Um, don't worry, Renee's not a North Carolina rep anymore. No, it's, no, it's great. She's um, the head of the US Department of Health and Human Services regional office in Atlanta. So she's got a more powerful job, yeah. Now, here's the thing, you know about the politically powerful, high profile women to look out for, but what about your mom's worst friend, Deborah? <laughs> You're not going to Kroger without mascara on, are you? Um, you might know this kind of lady, I do, I do, she's all over Texas. All you wanna do when you get off the plane is go home and snuggle with Fleba McIntyre your mom's 14-year-old incontinent beagle, <laughs> and drink wine out of a glass that holds exactly one bottle of wine. <laughs> but you can't because Deborah's there. She's the kind of lady who walks in without knocking in her loud, colorful clothes. I shouldn't make that joke with this turtleneck on, but um, <laughs> loud, colorful clothes and chunky necklaces, giving her the illusion of being a laid-back, fun, 
wine loving kind of lady, you know, a go with the flow kind of gal who doesn't mind if dinner plans change from fancy steakhouse to cheap hamburger joint. She's just there for the company. A woman just as comfortable on a, at a pier one as she is on an actual pier. <laughs> Don't be fooled though. She asked your mom for your flight information and happened and just hopped right in her golf cart so she could be there the minute you arrived to get this scoop on how bad your life is since you've left Texas. She asked thinly veiled questions like, bars are open till 4 a.m. in Chicago? Certainly you've just heard that, right, Erin? You haven't actually been there? They're just small little judgments until she lays out everything on the table after dinner. She says, Erin, you have got to get serious and find a nice smart man before no one wants you anymore. And there are so many of your mom's worst friends, Deborah, out, of, out there. Like this lady, Suzanne Wagner. That font, yes. <laughs> that pose, yes. Whoever told her this is how you should look in every picture, thank you. <laughs> she's my favorite kind of peeking over the hedges type of woman. Uh, she's a politically correct hating cultural critic and writer out there bravely challenging the cultural norms with her endless supplies of fox.com.com. Uh, <laughs> Who wants to guess how many hours of sleep I had in the last two days? <laughs> 16. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm gonna start using my words correctly. Okay, here are her foxnews.com essays. She's brave, you're not, she's so fucking brave being out here like this. I'm so happy Trump's not a feminist. <laughs> Are you weak if you make your man a sandwich? This is why real men don't marry feminists. Chivalry is dead because women killed it. Most men just want a woman who's nice. No, they don't. They want a woman who kicks him in the nuts. <laughs> suck his dick. <laughs> Are there children here? Someone said they were going to bring their 10-year-old daughter. Oh, okay, okay. I was like, I don't really say much, and then I realized I say a lot. Okay. <laughs> it isn't men who are toxic, it's women. <coughs> Brave. <laughs> anyway, she spends a lot of time. She, she has like an insatiable lust for undermining women because like all the other your mom's worst friend, Deborah, she probably went to college to write the next Gone with the Wind, mm -hmm. a fantastic book that about, not about racism at all. <laughs> but got sidetracked with her becoming a wife degree and ended up a bored, kept woman, mad at the ladies fighting for something greater than coordinating separates. Don't come to your mom's worst friend, Deborah, whining about your clinical depression. She's gonna tell you to get over it. And, but she's not the only bored rich mom with an outlet for their sad anger. There's also moms like Susan Patton. Oh, sorry, that was just a bonus picture. <laughs> Chivalry is dead and women are to blame. She, uh, she is, quite honestly, the saddest lady I've ever seen in my life. Okay, this is, do you remember this lady, uh, Princeton mom? She wrote an op-ed. Do you remember this lady? No? All right, well, in, the, in 2013, she wrote a, leper, a letter. She wrote a leper. Mm. <laughs> cool word, Erin. Um, in 2013, she wrote an open letter to the Daily Princetonian, which is her alma mater's uh, school newspaper with advice for the daughter she never had. The advice was basically to pick a man pronto because, is that her? <laughs> is that her? Okay. <laughs> because they'll never be, sur okay, I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna use, you know what I'm gonna do like a parent? I'm gonna use the not the right anatom anatomical word. So you'll get it when I get there. <laughs> Pick a man pronto because they'll never be surrounded by such quality stock of carrots <laughs> ever again. <gasps> hmm. <laughs> I, I have a Mac. <laughs> oh, just in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> Okay, this is what her letter, letter said. She said, 
As freshman women, you have four. She's from New Jersey. As freshman women, you have four classes of men to choose from. Every year, you lose the men in the senior class, and you become older than the class of incoming freshman men. So by the time you're a senior, you basically only have the men in your own class to choose from. And frankly, they now have four classes of women to choose from. Maybe you should have been a little nicer to these guys when you were freshmen. Okay, if you, that math confuses you. <laughs> Four classes of men divided by years in school plus the number of times you smiled equals potential husbands. Now, I love a, I love a lady who points. Um, she had this other, um, she, she really, she got, she rode her wave of internet virality and followed up with this. A little Valentine's Day straight talk. It was a letter to a working post-grad professional lady who's not spending enough time investing in finding a husband. This is what she wrote. Another Valentine's Day. Another night spent ordering in sushi for one and mooning over Downton Abbey reruns. Smarten up, ladies. That is my ideal evening. <laughs> Do you know what I did this Valentine's Day? I got high, gave my dog a massage, watched season two of Chef's Kitchen, and then uh, Ollie went to the Korean spa to explain to old men what Bitcoin is. <laughs> Dreams come true every day. Um, your mom's worst friend, Deborah's, don't understand nuance at any level. They're grasping at the idea of traditional relationships because they're filled with bitterness, and it's not your responsibility to be the laundry basket for their misery towels and shame socks. <laughs> Go to a therapist, Deborah. <laughs> I just want to yell that at anybody on the street. <laughs> Go to a therapist, Deborah. My name's Tony. <laughs> and next time your mom's worst friend, Deborah, tries to give you advice at your dad's luau-themed birthday party, <laughs> you put your hand on your shoulder and say, I'm sorry you hate your life, Deborah. <laughs> and then you light a joint and do not break eye contact. <laughs> but you know, at least with these ladies, like they're super upfront with what kind of women there are, but not that lying bitch. Oh yeah, she's all smiles and says all the things that make you think she's on the right side of history, like impassioned sentiments about women's health and pleas for sisterhood. But for real, she's an absolute sociopath. <laughs> Which is fine when she's your friend's mimosa addicted cousin from Cincinnati. The only thing you're, it doesn't matter. She's just crashing brunch and all you're gonna lose is an hour listening to her tell you that she slept with Usher. <laughs> Which she absolutely did not. <laughs> but when she's in the White House, there's a lot more at stake. Ivanka Trump, as you may or may not know, is the special assistant to the U.S. president. That's her sitting next to the most powerful woman in the world. Um, it's a title that no one's ever had because it's made up. Uh, it's not a real job. Oh, by the way, when I was in D.C., um, when I was working with this makeup artist, someone was doing my makeup, and um, he does Ivanka's. Oh, we got to do an update on this computer. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Gotta, gotta make sure Norton's okay on this. Um, he does Ivanka's makeup and he said that he was like booked one day and she really needed her makeup done and her assistant usually calls but on this day he was like I can't do it so then she called and said you need to come do my makeup and he was like I'm already booked and she goes you need to tell her that you're going to be doing the makeup for the daughter of the president and he was like I'm booked. <laughs> <laughs> this is the daughter of the pre. It sounds like a '90s movie with Kate, uh, not Kate Blanchett. Um, Katie Holmes. Yeah, Katie Holmes and Hathaway. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Do you need a job as a psychic? <laughs> um, Okay, so her job essentially is to trick her father into doing not the worst thing, which she's not even good at doing that. Um, and then maybe work on female both bolstering initiatives, but she's accomplished nothing, nothing, which that sounds really harsh. She's accomplished everything she can with the shallow well of courage she was born with. <laughs> That's nicer. 
<laughs> Listen, Ivanka is a complicated person who grew up in a world that none of us could imagine. And she has the wettest teeth of anyone <laughs> I've ever... Look how wet they are. <laughs> Her lips move around on them like two children covered in Vaseline on a water slide. <laughs> okay, in her book, The Trump Card, Playing to Win and Work in Life, she writes about how her dad arranged to have Michael Jackson, there they are, so cool, um, the wrong one died. Um, yes. Sorry about it. Um, she, so her dad arranged to have Michael Jackson watch her dance in a school production of The Nutcracker. Now, legally in the book, I wasn't allowed to say what I wanted to say, which is that, because I couldn't find like actual proof, but her dad paid Michael Jackson to come watch her in The Nutcracker. Michael Jackson wasn't like, yeah, I've got free time. I'll come watch Ivanka dance in The Nutcracker. So listen, she comes from a different world that I understand. This is, this is, this is her and her dad in their world in the 80s. This is me and my dad. <laughs> in the 80s. My dad and I would like to wear the same glasses. <laughs> and so we're, we just lived like, my, okay, so my dad used to hang from an apricot tree, probably the one in the back, and say, me monkey man, me shake fruit. And then I would scurry along on the ground and pick it up with my mouth like a rat. <laughs> Different, different lives. <laughs> and I hated pants. <laughs> Look how happy I am, and there's an empty seat right next to me. <laughs> Just like, everything's fine. I got tons of friends. <laughs> so her money and her pseudo status allow her to be a hypocrite. She can talk about reproductive care while her dad rolls back birth control coverage. She can express the importance of paid maternity leave while giving her employees none. She can rally to close the gender pay gap and then publicly support her father as he ends Obama's, Obama's initiatives to eradicate the gap. She can condemn sexual assault while ignoring the fact that her father likely raped her mother. I had to put that in for legal reasons, but we all know what really happened and attacked any number of other women. But blaming Ivanka's wealth for her lack of follow through is really too easy. She hasn't done anything because Ivanka is a soulless, conniving skag. <laughs> and if there's children in the room, that's not a nice thing to say. <laughs> if my dad publicly called me a piece of ass or told The View if I weren't his daughter, he'd be dating me, I would have taken my millions of dollars out of my personal bank account and dedicated my life to destroying my father. But it doesn't even affect her. It it? She, she's the perfect Trump Jr. Sorry, actual Trump Jr. <laughs> she's emotionless, ruthless, and willing to lie to protect her poo-poo empire. There she is. Um, her poo-poo empire. <laughs> is it? There's a kid in the room. Um, Okay, sure, Ivanka's a liar and a, sch and a schemer and an opportunist, but the worst thing about her is she's really effing boring. <laughs> On her Instagram, she writes about the things that she claims to be passionate about with the verve of a sloth coming out of a coma. This is, okay, <laughs> look at this. Oh, sorry, just a bonus. Oh God, I forgot about that. I should take that out or keep it in. <laughs> look at that. Anyway, um, oh, okay, this, this is her Instagram. Honored to share the stage with these amazing women leaders. Honored to join an incredibly meaningful cere ceremony. Honored to spend yesterday afternoon bowling with these amazing kids. Honored to dress the cabinet today to discuss tomorrow's executive order. Honored to lead the United States delegation in this year's Global Entrepreneurship Summit. That, there's more. Those weren't, those, I, I had a hard time picking some. Listen, you know what people who truly care do? They use different words. <laughs> and I'm really passionate about my dislike of Ivanka Trump. And because it's real passion, I can come up with so many things to call her. Things like flesh stiletto. <laughs> what an American Express Platinum card looks like and sounds like if a wizard brought it to life. <laughs> Lil Eva Braun. <laughs> Marzipan Gams, <laughs> Walking Blood Diamond, 
Arian Crayola. <laughs> Complicity Huffman. <laughs> Shiksa Von Swastika. <laughs> Can you blame her? <laughs> So listen, when you see her fake social media account and her counterfeit compassion, remember she means none of it. I don't even think she probably writes it. She probably pays some dead-eyed 16-year-old Deerfield boarding studio student to run her Instagram in exchange for a carton of Dunhills. <laughs> for anyone who doesn't smoke, those are the expensive cigarettes. <laughs> but you know what? Let her keep lying. Let Suzanne Vinkner write her garbage. Let Phyllis Schlafly's ghost float around Stone Mountain. <laughs> Does anybody know what Stone Mountain is? Uh, one person. Okay, so in Georgia, okay, you know we have how we have Mount Rushmore. In Georgia, they have Confederate Ru Mount Rushmore, and it's 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 Stonewall Jackson, Robert E. Lee, and Satan. I don't know. What that <laughs> is. It's like it's like a subreddit of a of a fucking monument. It's not recognized in the national like registry, but it's there. Anyway, <laughs> now you know. We don't, look, we don't need these women to change who they are. We just need better women to replace them. And if you're not going to run, you have to go out there and support all the amazing... There's a dog in the audience. <laughs> Who's this dog? What's the dog's name? Molly. Molly? A woman dog? That's so exciting. I cannot, can I hold her? Can I hold her while I say the last thing of the PowerPoint? Okay. <laughs> Molly! Molly, come here! Molly! Let's go. Molly, I need you to love me right now. <laughs> Hi, Molly! I love you! Can I pick you up? Yeah. Okay. Hi! Come here. Okay. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hello! Hello! <laughs> Listen, we are making a lot of changes this November. There's so many women running for office and they're fucking killing it. And we need to go out there and support them. And we have to go out there and make sure that women make America great again for the first time. <laughs> Molly's running for, I'm scaring her, aren't I? Molly, I'm sorry, am I too tall? Am I too tall? Should we just, can I just let her loose? Okay, great. Hi, Molly. Hi, Molly. She's like, I was on a skyscraper. Um, okay, that's just a little taste of what's in the book. The words will be better because you'll read them in your mind. But um, um, what we're gonna do next, just say hi to Molly, first of all. My mic came off during, did you hear all that? Was it all dog noises? <laughs> the last part of the thing on the video is just gonna be a dog's stomach grumbling. <laughs> there, that looks fine. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do next, um, that's just a little taste of what's in the book. That's, that's like, a, like a third of a chapter. Um, I talk way more shit about women in that chapter. <laughs> I really do think it's important um, to ignore those women and unless they're and, and just concentrate on women who are out there doing the hard work of getting elected. Um, speaking of getting elected, we're going to put a curse on Brett Kavanaugh right now. Now, I got this from a witch on the internet, <laughs> probably from here. <laughs> And we're going to do this call and repeat style, but I mean, this is witch stuff, so you guys will get it. <laughs> DC was like, I don't know if we should do this. <laughs> um, and I actually, this is so, it's so, it's so like impactful. I'm, I've been doing this every single book tour and you see what's happening, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's, 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 uh, Let's do them in because tomorrow's the, tomorrow's the day that's going to make this. So we really have to channel all of our witch energy tonight. So what we're going to do is we're going to open a... <laughs> Seattle, you're the fucking best. <laughs> Clearing your breath. <laughs> making an intention before we even start. Okay, we're going to open a circle around ourselves in the materials, which is this piece of paper right here. I'm going to write his name. It has to be his exact name because I don't want to curse Brett Kavanaugh, the, uh, the social worker. 
So his name's Brett Michael Kavanaugh. Um, duh. Of course it's Brett Michael. <laughs> So many letters. Okay, okay. We're gonna, we've opened the circle. Now what we're going to do is we're going to really concentrate on what we're saying right now. This is going to be call and repeat. I'll do it real slow. Are you ready? With the intention. With the intention. I the channel. I the channel. Energy from the universe. Energy from the universe. And now we're going to imagine all of that going into this slip of paper. Okay. Brett Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh. No harm will come to you. No harm will come to you. Only abundant misfortune. Only abundant misfortune. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to close the circle. And then after this, I'm going to burn this in the street. <laughs> I can't, I can't do it in, in here because it's basically a fireplace. So. Um, we'll have to do it later, but it's definitely working. Okay, the last thing I want to do, I, let's not end it on a bummer, let's end it on a hummer, let's not a break. <laughs> okay, we're gonna regender the US government. Yay! So, yeah, here's, did everyone get a chance to put an influential lady in the bucket? Did anybody not who wants a chance? Okay, great, we got a bucket full of ladies. Not a great way to put it. Um, thank you. Okay, great. Are you going to be writing? Ooh. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so um, unless there's, is there someone in the audience who has like the best handwriting in the world? No. Nope. Really oh shit. <laughs> do you want to do it? I'll do it. Yeah. Okay, great. What's your name? Carly. Carly. Thanks so much, Carly. Yeah. Here no, she I'm comes. Really okay. Oh, no, Let's take this off though. Bring there we go. <laughs> Can't stand it. Um, Okay, so here's how this is gonna work. We're gonna go bottom up, right? Um, <laughs> bottom up. We're gonna start with the Supreme Court Justice and we're gonna work our way up to President. This isn't really the line of secession, but we're, we're gonna, this is gonna be, so don't like at me, okay? Um, we're gonna pull two names out of this basket at random and then we're gonna vote. And how you're gonna vote is I'm gonna tell you who we're voting on, then I'll say their names again. And each time I s repeat their name, you're gonna go, yes! And that's how you're gonna, Okay, I'm trying to do these at random. Okay, so, no, that's, it was me and I, I can't do it. I can't, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Okay, ooh, okay, Supreme Court Justice. Now this is gonna be unfair because one of them already is one. <laughs> but then you're gonna see the other person and you're gonna be like, oh, this is, this is gonna be hard. Okay, so we're gonna be voting between Serena Williams, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. You see, it's it's tough, yeah. Because like Ruth's already on it. So how, what do you do? Do you vote for the woman who's not on it, or do you double vote for Ruth Bader? Do you have two Ruth Bader Ginsburgs? Do you see? Okay. So ready? We're gonna. Everyone's like, huh. okay. So I'm gonna say their names, and you're gonna say yes if you want them. Serena Williams. Yes. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes. Does any, I have, I think it was Ruth Bader Ginsburg double, but that was close. And yeah, was RG. okay, RB, RBG, let's put, R, here, do you wanna do, now listen, there, no pressure, but I've been putting these on the internet, and if you spell someone's name wrong, I'm gonna get a lot of hate mail. So just spell it like it is on the card and we'll blame that person. You didn't spell Frida Kahlo's name right. Well, I'm sorry. I was drunk. <laughs> okay. Now, next up is Attorney General Jefferson Beauregard Sessions, the whatever, hundredth. That's his real name. Not his real number, but that's his real name. Okay. Oh. Okay. This is great. I'm going to say her, I might not say her name perfectly right, but this is, this is good. Okay. So uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, you're out, and we're going to decide between Jane Fonda and uh, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Yes. Do you know who she is? Yes. Okay. Great. Um, okay. <laughs> Attorney General Jane Fonda. Yes. 
Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Yes. 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 This is good. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay, let me, let me circle these up real good. Okay, let's see what we got here. So next up, we've got Secretary of State, which is a um, terrible person. Wait, are you good? Okay. Yes. Secretary of State, not Rex Tillerson, Mike Pompeo. Yeah. Mm, it's gonna be tough. Uh, no, it's not. It's gonna be easy. Okay, Secretary of State, Oprah? Secretary of State, Miss Piggy. <laughs> okay, ready? Miss Piggy. Yes! Oprah. Yes! Do you need this for that? <laughs> okay. Oh, we already had her. Let me put this out. Um, okay, so next up is Speaker of the House. Ryan, oh, this is good. okay. Um, Paul Limp Biscuit Ryan. <laughs> Exciting. He's going to be gone. Who's going to replace him? Speaker of the House Eartha Kitt. Oh. Speaker of the House Dolly Parton. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there has been people. Um, there have been people we've we've done co co positions. So. Um, you know, vote vote your heart, okay? All right, uh, Speaker of the House, Eartha Kitt. Yes! Dolly Parton. Yes! Dolly got it. Right. Dolly, P-A-R-T-O-N. <laughs> okay, oh, Vice President Mike Mother Pence. <laughs> oh, mother. Make love to me, mother. <laughs> Oh, Mother, I think about you in your flannel long sleeve nightgown. <laughs> Making a pie and folding my socks. <laughs> I just want to do it to you real fast. <laughs> Mike Pence. Okay, who we're voting between Missy Elliott and Alicia Keys. It's tough. You have opinions. Okay. <laughs> Vice President Alicia Keys. Yes. Vice President Missy Elliott. Yes. Thank God. In my SSY. You yes. got that? Okay. Yes. Oh, she didn't need help on that one. <laughs> she did not need help on that one. Okay, this is exciting. President Donald Trump. Oh, this is, this is, we've done her. A lot of Ruth Bader Ginsburg in here. <laughs> so much. Okay, we did her. Hold on. Sorry, y'all. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> this is going to be hard. President Madonna or President Jane Campion. Is that how you say her name? Campion, right? No, it's not like a silent ch. So Jane Campion, if you don't know, did Top of the Lake. She did the piano. Um, anything near water, she directed it. <laughs> okay. President Jane Campion. Yes! President Madonna. Yes! Jane Campion got it. Uh, I, that makes me so happy. That makes me so, look at this, this is exciting. This is so exciting. We can do this in November. <laughs> Not this, but we could do something like this. Um, oh, this is, okay, so we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do a uh, meet and greet hugs, pictures, all that stuff. So, um, yeah, we're gonna do book stuff. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Thanks so much for coming.